Hi, it's Friday again. Um, for those of you that are equal eyed will see I am still wearing the same things as last week. And you'll notice that my desk is the same colour as my clothes. Um, I enjoyed doing last week's tag so much. Not tag, flag. Oh my goodness, we're on number 19. You thought I got used to that by now. Um, that I thought, do you know what, I'm going to do another one. Oh, how I live my life. And I just thought, right, this, this time you need to be inspired by colours that you love to wear. So mustards, yellows and blues. Um greys and things like that and my sort of go-to colours um yeah so we're going we're going we're off so what do we need to do i need a piece of backing fabric so i've got here um it's like a really thin denim that i've got i've pulled out some yellows in fabric and i've got some colours different types of threads and then what i've actually done is i have popped some of these bits of fabric onto Bonderweb. This is something that we've used um, previously. So it is a um, a weave of like glue that's heat activated. So I've got my little mini iron and you just iron it on and then we can cut shapes out and applique it. You could use fabric glue. You don't have to do this. I tend to do it because it just means that stuff sticks and it's not going anywhere. Um, I'm just busy looking for a tissue because my nose has just started running. Excuse me for one second that always happens when you're about to do something whoops right so here we go so i've got my backing fabric quite like that little rufty edge that's on there so i think i'm going to have that so that goes off the edge of my flag just going to draw my template piece and what we're going to do is we're going to create a little like bonded background of a grid so we've got straight edges and then we're going to do um, a bit like a flower over the top so i have got a sort of plan in my head i did a bit of a doodle of my idea hopefully it will work So think about what colours you tend to prefer to work. It's one of the things that I always find really fascinating when I run workshops. And we're just doing something where I say, like where people just go and collect materials together. Because I find it fascinating as to how many people actually end up creating a piece of work that's exactly the same colourway as what they are wearing. Right, I want to create a stripe or a strip down the edge of a finger's width. I'm always really um, dubious about which scissors you should use when you're doing bonderware because it's paper but it's also fabric. I suppose you could keep a specific pair for using with bonderweb, um, but I haven't. So this is going to get stitched down, not stitched down, stuck down. It's going to go from there to there. There to there. So it's quite good doing this because it has paper on the back. It means you can mark things off. There we go. Right, so to take it off, the easiest way I usually do is you get it in your finger and you just rip a little bit of a gap at the back and then it usually just peels off and it should leave the glue on the back of the fabric. And then pop it on top. Now, if I was doing this and it might overhang or anything like that, I would use a piece of baking paper just to protect my mat, but I've measured it exactly, so it should be fine. Press it on the front, press it on the back. Okay, so I've got my little stripe, tiny bit of an edge there of the blue. I want that to be really, really yellow. There we go. So I've got that, and then I want to do a bit of blue down here. So I'm sort of creating myself a shape, which is where my um, 
sort of flower shape is going to go. Let's do it that way around. I just find using Bonder Web is such a good thing when you're just wanting to quickly just get a background put together. It saves pinning and tacking and things like that. It just means you can just get straight on. You've got it all fastened down. It's all good. That's going to go up there. It also means then that you've got it ready to stitch but if you don't have bond web you can pin it and tack it just do some big tacking stitches so tacking stitches are just like big running stitches that'll just hold everything in I know when I've done it before and I've done tacking stitches I tend to leave them in because I quite like them quite like tacking stitches I think it just adds something else to your piece. So front, back. Okay. Doesn't quite line up. So while it's still warm, I can just lift that surface up. There we go, that's better. Right. Okay, okay, okay. So I wanted to do a couple of blue squares on there as well. Just so it sort of creates a little bit of a grid. So these will get stitched over. Oh, I had thought I might have a bit of the dark blue on there as well. Mm. Two. Go. Let's grab a bit of this dark blue. Bit of that on the bond web. You are just doing it like this. You do need to be careful not to get your iron on the glue. Normally, I wouldn't do it like this. I'd iron really big pieces, but as I'm only using little bits, it just seems a little bit bonkers. Um, gluing massive pieces but if I was doing a big project I would get some big sheets of bond web and it just makes it easier rather than cutting all your pieces out and ironing them on and then cutting them out if you just cut big bits it does This wasn't actually what I'd intended on doing for my background, but hey ho. It's nice just to have something that just happens. It's like last week when I hadn't intended on doing that at all as a flag. And I actually quite like it. Right. That on and then we need to start making our circle. like that right there we go right 
so now I need something circular. Is that about the right size or is that a bit big? That's a bit big. That's a bit small. Oh, it's going to be like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Nope, that's still a bit small. Oh, I thought that was going to be just right. <coughs> Should have thought about this first. Oh, candle. Oh, perfect. Right, so draw that round there. So I'm going to start creating now my sort of flower. This is a shape that I used a lot in my paper collages many moons ago. Thought of creating flower shapes and just keeping it really, really simple. So I'm going to build up some circles and then I'm going to stitch over the top. So when it comes to the stitching, you can do as much or as little as you want. If you quite like the collage, once you've all bonded it all together, you could just leave it as a bonded collage if you wanted. But at the moment, I'm planning on adding some stitching. Whether that will continue, I don't know. Now then, originally it was going to be there. I still actually quite like it there. Um, doo -doo -doo. And then I was going to put another colour on the inside. But I think I'd like a bit of that as well. Oh, we're going multi-layered. Oh God, I'm going to hope I'm going to stitch through this. Okay. So that was that. Sh that. that was a bit smaller. So it's just built up out of circles. That's sort of, I suppose the main plant I used to be influenced by was a dandelion and you get the circle of the um, feathery bits around the outside. Oh, that's cute. Um, I quite like the idea of a bit of blue on it as well. Um, you get the circle around the outside and then you get the bit that the little feathery bits are all joined onto. And then you get the centre of that. So it's all like circles in a circle in a circle. Sorry, I'm not, I hope I'm on the screen. If I'm not on the screen, I know a few of you have said about me disappearing off screen. I'm sorry. I try my best, but sometimes I get a bit carried away. Right, what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to iron it onto the blue first. And then I'm going to trim the blue just so that I just get a little pop of blue just around the edge of the yellow. So I just didn't want to do the yellow on the yellow because I just think it might disappear. There we go. We've got a little bit of blue around there and then that's going to stitch on. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four layers of um, fabric on this. I'm hoping I'm still going to be able to stitch through it. should be okay. Now then, this is when you can make decisions about, does it go central, does it go down, oh, quite like the idea of it being up, oh, up and possibly popping off, <gasps> ooh, do I go that way because it's blue, oh, it looks like a poppy, oh, it's a poppy head, <gasps> oh, that's cute, so it was going to be a flower, it's not, it's now a poppy seed head. Oh, cute. Right, and then I'm going to have a stem coming down and I was going to have some leaves. So I might go with that fabric and cut two leaves out. Cutie, cutie. Right, it's not going to be big enough for a leaf. So my stem is going to come down here. Should be big enough. Just go quite stylized. 
with our leaves. That's so cute. Or oh, you could just leave it like that if you wanted to. But I am going to do some stitching. I'm not sure how much stitching I'm going to do, but I am definitely doing some stitching on that. Right, let's give it a really good iron from the back. It just transfers the heat through. Make sure it's all stuck down. There we go. Right, messy desk. Let's have a tidy up. Uh, pen lid, there we go. Bits of fabric, I tend to have a little box then that I put all my bonded bits of fabric in because then you've got them for the next time you need them. Pop them over there, get rid of all these little bits. I have started actually throwing away tiny little bits and pieces because that is just getting crazy. See that looks really cute just on there as it is but Oh, do I need a little blue square there? Oh yeah, we need a blue square down there. It needs to balance it out a little bit. Yep, yeah, blue square down there. It's quite good sometimes when you're doing something like this is to do a little bit of it and then go and have a break and then come back and have a look at what you're doing. You just get a bit of a perspective on it. Or oh, one of the other things that I do with some of my pieces is I'll work on them, then I'll take a photograph of them and look at it on your screen because you don't then see it as lots of bits of paper or fabric or threads or anything like that. You actually see it as an image. Right, what a messy job today. Go to the bin. Oh, I should have the bin right next to me, but I don't. Okay. I need one of those cat thingies. Just a wipe on the top and get rid of all the bits and pieces. Right, unplug my iron so then I don't go and catch it and burn myself. Right then. Oh, stitching. To stitch or not to stitch, that is now the question. I'm definitely going to stitch my stem in. So I'm going to pick out the yellow, I think. Am I picking out the yellow? What am I doing? I've got a nice bright yellow that I was going to use and just pop out. Stems aren't really yellow, but it doesn't, that's not the point. A blue stem. Oh, nuts. Blue, I oh, see blue looks quite nice. Right, let's go for a blue stem. Oh, I could blue stem it and then wrap it. Right, okay, let's do blue. So I'm going to do a little back stitch for my stem. Oh. And then I'm going to wrap it with a yellow. Now you can stitch around all the edges. So you could just do blanket stitch, chain stitch, couch stitches, absolutely anything at all. So if you're a beginner embroidery, keep it really simple. If you've got a good repertoire of stitches, you could throw absolutely anything at this. Right, 
and formulated a plan. It's one of the things that I truly believe. You should never just sit and just think, what shall I do? What shall I do? The best thing to do is always start stitching. And then usually when you're stitching, you will come up with um, different ideas as to what you could do. The worst thing you can do is sit there and try and plan everything. Hopefully these videos give you a bit of an inspiration and get you started, but you need to put your own twist on your flags, which loads of you have been doing. I know some people, they want like that idea, that confidence of following a pattern and design and things like that. But I want you to start having confidence that you do know what you're doing. You do. You really, really do know what you're doing. We're just learning together as we're going along, trying out new things, not getting stressed about it. So that's not what stitching's about. It is about letting go. It's a bit of an escape from life. Sometimes it's very good. It's good for your mental health. I know if I have a really stressed day, just coming and stitching something doesn't even have to be a project because sometimes if you think I've got to go and stitch a project you put pressure on yourself straight away and it's like oh, you don't need that pressure straight away the second that you pick up a needle and thread which hopefully is what these are helping you with giving you little prompts get you started but I know people have done some of these and then they've gone on and done other things based on it or they've taken inspiration from their piece of work that they've done. You're making it your own. Just in, hopefully just inspiring you. Possibly even to pick up a needle if you haven't done before. Or come back to stitching if it's something that you used to do. And you've just lost that mojo. I know over the past few years everybody's found it quite difficult just to keep going with everything. And I just think stitch is definitely a way to do that. So hopefully you're enjoying the flags. Sorry I keep having a few glitches with either my brain forgetting to post something or I know a few weeks ago we had a few problems with Kofi. It was a problem actually with their site. There was something wrong with the scheduling on it. So I had scheduled it. It's just it didn't go live for some reason but they fixed that now so that's good. I'm quite right now. So I've just done a back stitch around the edge of there. Right, I'm going to finish with that one because then I want to do the yellow. So just tie it off at the back. Just make a little loop. Pop it through a couple of times. Make a knot. Right, so what I'm going to do now with my yellow is I'm going to wrap that around the back stitch coming upwards. So I'm going to come up where I started with the blue. And then either, I was going to use a blunt needle, but you can't do this with a blunt needle because I needed to go through quite a few bits of fabric. So if you flip your needle around, so you're using the eye, and all I'm going to do is come in from the left hand side and go underneath, always coming in, well I'm always coming in from the left. If you're right handed, you'll probably come in from the right. And what this is doing is it's wrapping the thread. So this is really nice. It's just going to give it a little shot of colour you can see there so all I'm doing is coming in from that side oh it's gone out of focus there we go in from that side pull it through in from that side pull it through all the way up the top And then when you get to the top, 
just go over and pop it through to the back. So it's just picked out a lovely little bit of yellow just on that. Really, really cute. And then around the edge, I'm going to use a Pekingese stitch because that gives the cutest edge. So you can add these stitches. You can add any other stitches that you want to. That's fine. So what I'm going to do is I've got to think about now because I want the loops on the outside. So I'm coming up the middle of one of my back stitches here. And then again, I'm going to use the back of my needle. So I'm going underneath a stitch and then I go back a stitch. Just got a tiny little one there just to come back through. not got a stitch there oh nuts right Went through that one okay right thought I'd done a little stitch there but I haven't so come through that one oops there we go and then back through and you go underneath and you leave a little loop so then I go down a bit so then I go on a stitch underneath. So I'm using the eye of my needle so that I'm not going through the fabric. Then I go back and I go underneath that stitch and underneath the thread and create a little loop. On to the next one, go on one. Come back underneath. So I'm going underneath the stitch and the thread. So you can really play around with this, um, with your backing piece, with all different types of fabrics if you want. So I've played around mainly with texture. I've got one patterned piece because I'm not going to do any stitching on that at all. Whereas all the other bits I've just played around with sort of like a fairly open weave, um, a tight weave, a fabric that's got sort of like a variegated colour to it. So think about your fabrics Oops. and just put them together before you start doing it. Just sort of like layer them up, see what they look like playing off each other. If it's all too much, then if you've got a patterned fabric, look for a highlight colour that you could pick out of it or a darker colour if everything's too light. So I've like got the really dark blue the very light yellow and then I've gone for a few mid-tones okay. glasses are falling off my nose So using like the, the um, blunt end, the eye of your needle makes your job a little bit easier because if you've got a sharp needle, you can end up going through the thread or through the fabric and then you just won't create the effect that we're after. Oh, this is cute. So my original plan had been to have it circular with a Pekingese around the edge so my original plan was something a bit more like that but like I say when you've actually got bits cut out and you play around with the placement and the composition of them you can end up changing your mind and that's what I mean when I was saying earlier on it's better just to start having a go at something than try and plan it if you try and plan everything I think sometimes you can end up a little bit disappointed because you've got an idea in your head of what you want it to look like and then it can become quite frustrating 
when you're busy creating a piece of work that it doesn't look like what you imagined it was going to look like and then you can just be disappointed whereas if you just have a starting point and you can just let yourself go which I know is quite easy for me to say because a lot of the time that's how I work is I have an idea in my head that I start off with and then just see what happens I know for some people that can be very stressful but give it a go most of these flags are like that I mean well they are for me definitely because I don't have anything to reference you've got mine to reference so at least you've got that bit of a safety blanket that just gives you that starting point but just have a go have a go the screen keeps going off don't go it says inactivity. I'm definitely being active, I'm just not using the screen. There we go. All the way around. Last one. There we go. And then to finish it off, just check that you've got your tension right, just on all your little loops. And then just go down to the back so then one of the things that I definitely knew I wanted to do with this yellow was in this centre bit now this is the bit I wasn't sure about whether it was going to work or not One, two, three. there's some French knots I can definitely feel the fact that I've got like four pieces of fabric and bonder web so French knots point your needle and your thread away from the hole Wrap it round. As you put it back down, just pull on that slightly so you get the threads at the bottom of your needle. Then you get your nice little knot at the bottom. Oh, that's looking cute. So I feel like I don't know if I need something there. Or something there. Do I do more knots? Not sure. Right, okay, we're gonna leave that for now. I think this is gonna be one that I'll probably do a little bit more to and then I'll come back to a bit later on. I know one of the things that I wanted to do. I've got blue. Yep, got a blue, we've got a variegated blue. Oh, that's handy. I was going to do a fly stitch down the leaves. So I'll just start off with that first one. So it's first stitch. So you fly stitch, you create a V. You go from one side to the other. And then you come up at the bottom of that first little stitch and then create the next stitch down. So make it a bit wider because we're coming down that leaf. Come up at the bottom of your stitch. normally I'd be able to do like the in and the out all in one but because there's all the fabric and the bonder web you'll find that your fabric feels a little bit stiffer than normal
Originally I was going to stitch around the edges of all the background and stuff like that, but I think if I end up doing that, I think there's probably going to be too much stitching. I can't believe I've just said that. It'll be too much stitching. Put that on there. Oh, that's kind of cute. Trim that. Oh. Right, so that's where I'm up to with that one for now. Um, I think this is one that I'm going to walk away from and then come back and see whether or not I want to do anything else. But actually, I don't know that I do. Oh, I know what I'll do before we go. I might just finish it now. Get a bit dark. I just need a bit of dark blue. So this is a thinner thread. This is like a cotton, really thin cotton. Thing I just need oh, just a few tiny little French knots just in and amongst there. I tend to go for if I'm doing something where I've got like specific numbers, I try to go for odds. So I've got three yellow. I'm going to go for five blue. And I think I'm just going to do <coughs> still a little running stitch just around the edge. Have that in the same colour. I can't really see it, but I think it's just adding a little bit of a shadow. It's knowing when to stop sometimes as well because you can get too carried away with your stitch. It's a little bit like when you do drawing, you can just do a little bit too much and it can just end up ruining what you've just done. Yeah, that's better. It's just sort of added like the hint. That sounds silly, but a bit of like a shadow. Oh. Right, I'm done. So you're basing it on colours that you like to wear. It's a patchwork at the back with a flower or something at the front. Let's trim that off. Give it a haircut. Bit of glue. And then I will stitch it on. Quite like doing this bit because then it's like I've done. Can't do anything else to it now. I have attached it. this time. So put your hole through from the front, come up from the back, two, three, four, and go back down. Oh that's cute. On the outside. Let's wrap it around a couple of times. One, two, 
to create your little knot. We're done. Woo! Number 19. There we go. Okay, so I'll see you next week. Happy stitching and have fun.